V2G is the future of EV charging and getting installations ready for it will open up huge opportunities. This car is ready, this charger is ready, the electrical installation, hmm, we'll get back to that later. Powers Adventures. In this video, we'll look at what's needed to make the most of this technology and how electricians can future proof for the next big leap in EV charging. Because if we get this right, it could change how we power homes and the grid forever. We're here on site to take a closer look at the new Zaptec Go 2, a compact, stylish home charger that's already V2G ready. It even has clever solar integration features for smart energy use. But as we'll see, having the right car and the right charger is just part of the story. The rest is about ensuring the installation is ready for the technology when it arrives. Let's break it down. V2G or vehicle to grid is a way of using the large battery in an electric vehicle for more than just driving. Most EVs spend most of their time parked with much of their battery capacity unused. V2G puts that capacity to work by sending energy back into the grid when it's needed most. One of the biggest challenges with renewable energy is that it isn't always generated when we need it. Solar peaks in the middle of the day, wind is unpredictable and demand can surge at other times. V2G helps smooth out those peaks and troughs by storing renewable energy when it's plentiful and feeding it back when it's in short supply. With thousands of EVs doing this together, it could act like a giant distributed battery for the grid. It's a concept already used with home batteries connected to solar panels, but the scale is different. A typical home solar battery stores five to seven kilowatt hours. An EV battery is often closer to 60 kilowatt hours. That's roughly 10 times more capacity enough to run a home for several days without using grid energy. Now this is where where V2H or vehicle to home comes in using the EV battery to power essential circuits during a power cut or store cheaper or cleaner electricity for later. We're already seeing the first step in this with V2L or vehicle to load where many EVs can power appliances directly. Full scale V2G takes it further connecting the EV into the grid itself and it's already a defined global standard in ISO 15118-20 ready for wider adoption. Which neatly brings us to some of the changes we see in the Zaptec Go 2. One of the most noticeable things that's different about this version of the charger is this rather cool looking display here. Now that serves great functions, get some fantastic graphics on there as the charger's updating and connecting to the car. But the most important point is its MID class meter, measurement instrument directive meter, which means that the power delivered from the charger can be linked to billing. Why is that important? Well, under this new world of V2G, you might be paid to use the power from your car, not just back to the grid, but even to power your own home. So you might be incentivized essentially to go off grid, but I'm pretty sure most people will want to be paid for that. And you might be paid quite handsomely for it. So to do that, that's why the MID meter is in there. Another important feature is that as the ISO 15118 standard develops, the Zaptec Go 2 will be able to support it through a simple software update delivered over the air, just like a phone update. That's a big part of why this charger can be described as V2G ready. The hardware is already in place and the capabilities can be unlocked as the standard and the market evolve. And because it's part of the energy system, it's built to meet the latest cybersecurity requirements, protecting the data moving between the car, the charger and the grid from the moment it leaves the vehicle. Once a charger becomes a two-way gateway, it's not just moving electricity, it's handling information about energy usage tariffs and permissions. So here's where things get a little bit grey. We will let you into a secret actually we call these EV chargers but there's actually not much charging takes place in here because the charge electronics to actually convert the battery power back to AC takes place in the car which causes a little bit of problems when it comes to approvals because how much power can you put back into the grid now solar installers will be very familiar with things like G98 which sets that limit at around 16 amps but how does that work in the V2G world? You've got to have an approval on the car where the electronics are, and that can move around and can be plugged in all sorts and could be replaced by a different car. And essentially that's that last step that we're waiting for to happen for this new V2G world to really happen. 
If a customer wants V2H vehicle to home to power circuits during an outage, the system must be isolated from the grid. That means extra equipment at the distribution board and a dedicated earth rod because you can't use the distributor's earthing in island mode. In battery storage systems, this is paired with a neutral earth bond and proper switching to ensure safe operation. This is probably why the Zaptec Go 2 doesn't include built-in pen fault protection, a UK specific requirement for TNCS systems. And with the right design, adding an earth rod can remove the need for a separate pen fault protection device altogether. The wiring regs are already adapting for more reverse power flow with new requirements for bi-directional RCDs and RCBOs like the one fitted here. The key point, the Zaptec Go 2 may be ready for V to G but the opportunity comes from preparing the installation so the customer can take full advantage of it when the time comes. Of course that doesn't mean electricians can't prepare now by installing a V2G ready solution. We'd simply recommend allowing space in the distribution board for any additional equipment that may be required in the future. The Zaptec Go 2 also retains the installer friendly features of the original version, screwless terminals, generous cable entry options and a compact lightweight form factor that makes wall mounting straightforward. If we're going to take anything from this installation it's this top tip from Ross using these frame fixings to stand off from an uneven wall. It also offers flexible connectivity options with both Wi-Fi and built-in 4G support. Port. That means even if the charger is installed somewhere with no reliable home network coverage, it can still connect for updates, monitoring and smart charging features. Of course, we're professionals on this channel, so we did a quick site survey. Oh, there it is. I am on O2 and I've got one bar. I'm on Sky and I don't have any 4G. Well, I'm on three and I've got one bar with 4Gs. I'm on EE, I've got one bar of 5G, which means I can probably get data but can't make phone calls. The charger is compatible with both single and three phase installations, supporting power levels up to 22 kilowatts, which could be a real game changer when used for V to G. It also integrates with solar installations via the Zaptec Sense, and one particularly clever feature is its ability to switch between single and three phase charging. EVs need a minimum current per phase to charge, typically six amps on a three phase system. That works out to around four kilowatts. Below that power level, most chargers will simply shut down. The Zaptec Go 2 is smarter. At lower power levels, it will automatically switch to single phase charging, still at six amps, which allows the EV to continue charging with as little as around 1.4 kilowatts of solar generation. A few other subtle changes in the charger include this rather playful die cast base. It's not just for looks, it also helps improve thermal performance, particularly in countries with higher ambient temperatures. It's another example of how Zaptec has refined the go-to for performance and durability in real-world conditions. So while the Zaptec go-to is ready for V2G today, the real question is, is your installation ready to make the most of it? So here's where V2G gets really interesting. I spoke to a car dealer the other day who said he'd seen a car with around about a 40 kilowatt battery go through auction for about £7,000. Now do the maths compared to installing that as a traditional battery storage system and I think that's a game changer. This charger fits itself and I've been well fed. It's a win-win. Mm. Delicious.